Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring George Raft and June Havoc in Intrigue. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In my travels around the world, no place has held more fascination for me than Shanghai, that city of western turbulence and oriental mystery. Shanghai today is in the death grip of inflation, and from that grim fact comes the story of tonight's play, Star Films' current screen hit, Intrigue. And our stars in their original screen roles are George Raft and June Havoc. By a odd coincidence, George Raft and I had just finished making a picture together when Mrs. Keeley and I left for the Orient, and of course, Shanghai. At that time, it was a city of great opulence, in which the stores along the famous Nanking Road sold every modern luxury, from finest oriental silks and laces to Lux flakes with which to care for them. And while those new tiny diamonds of Lux hadn't made their appearance yet, I can assure you that in that cosmopolitan community, with its varied tastes and habits, Lux flakes were a common denominator in the home. We bring you now Act One of Intrigue, starring George Raft as Brad Dunham and June Havoc as Tamara Baranov. China, 1947. The city of Shanghai, reeling under the impact of inflation, where each day brings a new high to the fantastic cost of living, where the worker collects a small mountain of paper money as his wages, only to find it will buy him next to nothing, and where fabulous profits are being made in the infamous black market. But the black market can't exist without goods to sell, and one of its sources of supply is Indochina by air. A large plane jammed with food and luxury items has just landed in an obscure field at the edge of Shanghai. Welcome back to Shanghai, Mr. Dunham. Thanks. Any trouble? Apart from this fog, plenty. The military police arrived just as I was taken off. Machine guns. They almost got the gas tank. Surely they did not disturb you. After your exploits in the war? Shut up, Raymond. You better start looking for a new pilot. I'm through unless I get more dough. You made a deal. The boss won't pay anymore. You promised me a certain amount of protection, which I'm not getting. So tell your boss I want more money. Where can I reach you? Same as always. Windsor Hotel. No. Uh, I, uh, I have some bad news. Your friend who lived with you in the hotel. Ellis? What about him? He's dead. What are you trying to... Three days ago. The newspaper said it was Suicide. He shot himself. Suicide. Under the circumstances, maybe you'd rather not see me for a few days, huh? Talk to the boss now. Tonight. Just as you say, Mr. Donovan. And naturally, Mr. Dunham, the manager wanted to notify you at once. If you had left a forwarding address for that... His body... Where is it? The hotel took the liberty of engaging a funeral director. He's awaiting your instructions. Here. Here's his card, Mr. Dunham. Thanks. If anybody asks for me, I'll be at the bar. Oh, good evening, Mr. Dunham. Hello, Mike. Give me the usual. Yes. I, uh, sure sorry about Mr. Ellis. Yeah. I remember during the war, you and Mr. Ellis and the other two, they never seen four fellas such good friends as you were. That was the swellest crew in the Air Force. Now you're all that's left. Fill it up, Mike. Oh, cigarette? Yeah. 
American cigarettes. Hey, would you mind telling me where you got Right here in the hotel. But they said they was all sold out. Ten dollars a pack of American money, they're never sold out. Ten dollars American? Ain't it ever gonna stop? Who cares, Mike? There's a lot of dough to be made at a time like this. Maybe not as much as you think. All right, Raymond. What did the boss say? I told you before. We agree on a price. You didn't see the boss, did you? What's the matter? Scared of him? Matters like this, I can handle. I'll see him myself, then. Take me to him. Impossible. No one sees the boss, and the boss sees no one. He'd better see me. You're in no position to make demands. We had an understanding. Take it or leave it. Nasty sort of character, isn't he? So am I, Mike. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hey, Louie. Louie. Mr. Dunham. Oh, may I take you somewhere in my rickshaw? That depends, Louie. Look, you know I flew a plane in tonight, don't you? Well, uh, yes, I... Come on, Louie. You're a smart little guy. Tell me. Where'd they take the cargo that I carried? There was a truck at the field. Where did it go? Well, sir, I seem to have heard a rumor that the cargo was delivered to a warehouse on the street of Fallen Leaves. My humble rickshaw is at your service. All right, let's go, Louie. That is the warehouse, Mr. Dunham, over there. Oh, thanks. How much? You have done me many kindnesses. I am grateful I have had opportunity to repay in part. I wait for you? No. No, with any luck, I'll be driving back by truck. Mr. Dunham's a fool. Hey, Mike, look what I just found. Am I seeing things, or is that a bottle of hay and hay? Well, how would you like a drink of real scotch instead of that light up fluid you've been dishing out? Hay and hay? Well, I have been spent an evening with those two boys since before the war. Well, fill up a class, couple of glasses, Mike. Yes, sir. Is that real? That it is. It looks like home. It tastes like home, too. Well, Mike, a glass for the lady. No, thank you. I just want to look at it. Homesick? A little. Been away long? It seems like years, but it's not, actually. I'm a field worker at the International Settlement. My name is Arnold. Linda Arnold. Hello. You make a hobby of talking to strangers in bars? Not usually. But you looked American, and I saw no harm in it. It's a sense you don't know who I am. Should I? Brad Dunham. The name mean anything? No. Well, I'll give it to you fast. Nice girls aren't supposed to talk to me, much less be seen with me. Why? I'm a bottle with a label on it. It says poison, and there's no antidote. I feel no ill effects. Stick around. You will. Cigarette? No, no thanks. Mr. Dunham. Don't go away, baby. You'll see what I mean. Mr. Dunham, we are very much interested in knowing where you put that certain large package. Didn't you hear me? I said, where did you hide? I talked to nobody but the boss. As I was saying, Miss Arnold, you must allow me to show you the points of interest in Shanghai. We'll start with these two crummy characters in back of me. The little one is a small-time toughie who... Mr. Dunham. Do I talk to the boss? Very well. Come with me. Miss Arnold, uh, you take care of those two guys in the bottle, and I'll take care of these two. Well, let's go, chums. Well, hello. It's so nice of you to drop in, Mr. Dunham. You refused to talk to me, Madame Baranoff. I had to bring him here. If I had known your, your office was here in the warehouse, I would have dropped in earlier tonight. Ramon, this isn't the first time you've been unable to carry out my orders. I've never send a boy to do a man's work. What's your rotten mother? Ramon. Now, Mr. Dunham, shall we get down to business? I made a deal to talk to the boss. 
Alone. Oh, Raymond, you may go. Close the door. Yes, madame. I'll go. Oh, the black market sure pays off. This is quite a layout. I must say your methods are a little flamboyant, Mr. Dunham. You mean stealing the truck? <laughs> it got results. I'm talking to the boss. Yes, but you might have been killed. Not by the guys you got working for you now. Well, how do you know you're safe with me? How do you know I haven't got a gun? Because your clothes fit you much too well. <laughs> Plain to see you haven't got a gun either. All this is very charming, Mr. Dunham. But it doesn't get me back my truck. It's yours. Well, just like that. No, I want a cut. Oh, and how much of a cut do you expect to get for one truck? Half. Pardon. <laughs> You're very amusing. Well, it's not that funny. Look, I flew the cargo, then hijacked it myself. And I've got it stashed away where your surly characters will never find it. You must admit that's a pretty good night's work for one guy. Uh-huh. And you really think you can talk yourself into a partnership on the strength of one truckload of cargo? No. The truck was the key to your door. Oh. But I give you credit for knowing a good thing when you see it. <laughs> Meaning you. Meaning me. Oh, you're much too modest, Mr. Dunham. Modesty doesn't pay off. You should know that. I don't like the trend your conversation's taken. What do you want? Light conversation or results? Look, I'm the only one around here that talks your language. Oh, you've got the black Mornup market cornered, but you're not running it right. I see. And you think you could run it right? Mm, what have you got to lose? If I double your business and you cut me in for half, you'd still be making as much as you're making now. And I'd be doing all the dirty work. You could just sit back and relax and stay beautiful. You make it sound very attractive. From where I'm standing, it is. You may not know it, Mr. Dunham, but I've been watching you for a long time. Shall we drink to a successful partnership? Thanks. But that still won't prove I'm a partner. You are hard to convince. All right. I'll ring for Raymond. Raymond? My partner wants to give you an order. Partner? Yes, go and pick up the truck. It's in the garage and back at 2300 Rhodes Avenue. And hurry back. If he gives the orders, I don't take them. Okay, then you're fired. Get out. It's crowded in here. Well, Raymond, you heard him. Good night. Good night, Mara. You satisfied, Mr. Dunham? Not quite. Will, will this convince you? Yeah, I feel a lot better now. I never kissed a million bucks before. I think you'll be back, Mr. Donald. Drink? No, oh, thanks, Mike. What happened to that girl, uh, Miss Arnold? Well, she left about an hour ago. Girls like her don't wait in bars. Oh, that's too bad. She leave any message? Yeah, she said she'd get in touch with you. She did? You made a hit with that little lady. You should have set her straight. Good night, Mike. Brad! Brad! You son of a gun! Mark! Gee, Brad! Four long years. Hey... You know, I really shouldn't talk to you. Why? Why? I wrote you over a dozen letters. Didn't get them. Well, I didn't know what happened to you. The last one came back address unknown. What are you saying? Right here. Here? Well, I just tried to get a room and they told me there wasn't Well, one. you got yourself a room now with me. Come on, get your luggage, Mark, and come on upstairs. <laughs> Well, it's nice to know some things haven't changed. Say, Brad, that uh, picture on your bureau, that's your crew, isn't it? It was. Yeah, I heard about the rough deal the four of you got. What do you think? Well, you didn't have to ask me that. Uh, why those pencil crosses on the other boys? I checked them off. They're dead. Ellis, too? Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? 
He took his own life. Oh, he never really got over it after the four of us got kicked out of the army. He started hitting the bottle. Lost everything except his pride. And that went. Oh, it's tough. Well, you seem to have come out of it all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, you still writing for the newspapers, Mark? <laughs> still at it, Brad. Except now I'm working for a syndicate, a dozen papers back in the States and the English paper here in Shanghai. Brad, I'm on the biggest story of the day. What is it, or can't you say? Oh, I could tell you anything, pal, but keep it to yourself for a while. I've been assigned to expose the black market. Black market? Yeah. The rats running it aren't just crooks, Brad. They're murderers, the worst kind. There are people starving for a handful of rice, while these big shots hold it back for a higher price. I'd like to see them lined up and shot. With any luck, maybe I will. Mm, you sound like you mean it, Mark. Mean it? I never worked on a story in all my life, Brad, that I was more anxious to break. Hey, maybe you can help me. You got connections in this town. Yeah, uh, I've got connections. Oh, uh, let's hit the sack, huh? <laughs> oh, that's for me. A real bed with sheets. <laughs> Good night, pal. Mark, about the assignment of yours. Yeah? Give it. Good night, Mark. Our stars will return with Act Two of Intrigue in a moment. Say, uh, Libby, did you ever get on the set of the Iron Curtain while they were shooting the picture of 20th Century Fox? No, they really had the place guarded. And complete scripts were scarce as hen's teeth. It's turned out to be one of the most thrilling stories of modern espionage I've ever seen. It's based on over 1,800 pieces of factual evidence. Some of it so unbelievable they didn't dare use it. No fictional spy story could top this one. Oh, when I saw Dana Andrews with his crew haircut around town, and then Gene Tierney's windblown bob... I thought maybe a barber was the main character. <laughs> <laughs> well, they both worked hard in the Iron Curtain, especially on location in Ottawa when they worked eight hours a day in zero weather. They wore heavy socks inside their shoes to keep their toes from getting frostbitten. That doesn't sound like glamorous Jean. Well, of course, in private life, Jean loves very feminine clothes and always wears the sheerest of nylons to compliment them. Navy or wine for a single color effect, or the new powdery pastels to pick up the color in a spring print. And smart girls know that the new spring and summer shades and stockings make it more important than ever to give nylons gentle care. But that's easy with the new tiny diamonds of Lux. Remember how often women have said Lux couldn't be improved? Well, they eat their words now because these new tiny diamonds are better than ever. These new diamonds are different from any other soap. They were developed during the war, but couldn't be produced until new machinery was built. But now they're here. And that's good news to girls everywhere. Because the new tiny diamonds of Lux make stockings last twice as long. Test show. Keep them better fitting. Colors fresher. Here's your producer, William Keeley. Act two of Intrigue, starring June Havoc as Tamara Baranoff and George Raft as Brad Dunham. Several days have passed, and Mark Andrews, the crusading newspaper reporter, has started his series of articles aimed to smash the notorious black market in Shanghai. Now, in the newspaper office, he's dictating to a secretary. With every man, woman, and child fighting for mere existence, struggling desperately for the bare necessities of life. Openly venting their pilfered and smuggled goods, the black market is Shanghai's greatest problem. Pay the price or don't eat. Often the price is 5,000 times higher than pre-war. The only escape from this suffering and privation is death. And hundreds are escaping daily. The profiteers who control the black market must be singled out and publicly exposed. Those individuals who, blinded by greed, control food, control the lives of innocent men, women, and children... And those who control lives control nations, races, and the rest of the world. 
Well, type it up, Ben, and let's see how it looks. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Oh, incidentally, did you check that lead on Madame Baranoff? The report is quite accurate, sir. Madame Baranoff is one of the most ardent supporters of the international settlement. Oh, she is, huh? Well, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, uh, were there any calls for me this afternoon? Just one, Mr. Andrews. Mr. Dunham. He said he's sorry, but he won't be able to meet you for dinner tonight. Oh? Well, thanks, Anna. Thanks. Enjoy your dinner, Miss Arnold? It was wonderful. I love Chinese food. Oh, this is the one place in Shanghai where you can get the kind of Chinese dishes you only get back in the States. Uh, would you like to dance? Uh, what? I said, would you like to dance? Oh, I'd love to. I'd forgotten that people can have fun. I sort of forgotten, too. It's hard to believe that you're a social worker. Why? You dance too well. Then come over to the settlement house and see for yourself sometime. Me? With a bunch of kids? Why not? Yeah, why not? One of these days, I may take you up on that. that I simply don't know what that settlement house would do without you, Madame Baranoff. Well, I only wish I were able to do more, Miss Carr. Come I... in. Yes, Linda? I'm sorry to disturb you, Miss Carr, but Mr. Sen is calling. If you will take him to my office, please. Yes, Miss Carr. Please come with me, Madame Baranoff. Mr. Sen owns the newspaper. I want you to hear what he has to say. Of course, Miss Carr. Those are the facts, Miss Carr. If you could possibly see your way to accepting a few more children here. I wish we could, Mr. Sen, but I... Well, I simply don't see how we could manage. Mr. Sen, how many children are there in this group? Twenty-two. Their parents died of starvation in the Sanchi province. Oh. If something is not done, they will die too. Yes. Well, something must be done. What does your assistant have to say, Miss Carr? Well, Linda? I think we can manage. If we cut the rations again. Bring the children, Mr. Sen. We'll do what we can. Thank you. Thank you very much. And keep printing those articles in your newspaper. Yes, those articles. Very interesting. Since Mr. Andrews started writing them, the authorities are making arrests every day, aren't they? Yes, madam. But nobody big. Oh. Nobody important. The black market continues, controlled by a few who place the love of money above the lives of children. Oh, excuse me. It's time to serve our elaborate one-course lunch. Time for lunch, children. Get your plates and stand in line. Oh, stand in line, please. Your pardon, Miss, please. Yes, son. A gentleman is at the gate, Miss, inquiring for you. Oh? Tell him. Tell him I'll be there in a moment. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Brad. Well, there are the kids. When the weather's warm like this, we let them have lunch out of doors. Children? Children, this is Mr. Dunham. Hi. Uh... Are you an orphan too, Mr. Dunham? Yes, I suppose you could call me that. Did your parents die in the hill? Now, Mia, run along and finish your ride. Oh, I did finish, but I'll run along if you wish. You mustn't mind them, Brad. I don't. I was a kid once myself. Excuse me, it's time for their games. All right, children. Baseball! Did you say baseball? All right, kids, come on, we'll choose up sides. Oh, we already have our team, sir. Well, where's the picture? I prepared the ball from the mound, sir. Well, that's one way of doing it. Oh, well, is anybody around here, the umpire? We don't have an umpire. Well, if it's all right with both sides, I'll call him as I see him. Thank you, sir. We shall have the utmost confidence in your judgment. Oh, it's plain. You never played in Brooklyn. All right, come on now. Let's play ball. Yeah, come on. Strike two. Strike two, sir? Right over the plate. Begging your pardon, sir. It seemed to me that the ball was rather wide. I'll, uh, I'll watch it, Shorty. Thank you, sir. All right, picture. Give him another one. Yes, sir. Oh, nice hit, Shorty. Hey, hey, what's the matter with Shorty? Look. Look, he's on the ground. Shorty. Shorty, what happened? Shorty. Sure, he 
Harry's all right, Linda? I think so. I put him to bed. He's resting. I'm afraid baseball isn't quite the game for these children. They're not very strong, you know. They don't get very much to eat. Well, why don't you feed them more? Feed them more? What do you think we do here? Eat it ourselves? There just isn't enough to go around. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Many people don't know. Unless they see it with their own eyes. The black market doesn't touch their lives. But it touches these lives. Very deeply. Yeah. Well, well, I I guess I'll be shoving off, Linda. Thanks for coming. Thanks for letting me. Are you coming back again, Mr. Dunham? Try and keep me away. <laughs> Mia seems to have quite a crush on you, Brad. I hope you meant what you said. Not enough to eat. That's hard to believe. Not enough to eat. <laughs> Do come in. Sit down. Louis said you were looking for me. Where were you just going? One of our boats are doing this morning. I thought I'd go down to the harbor. That's what I wanted to see you about. Master's just phoned me. Oh, then they've docked already. Oh, I'll get the trucks down there right away. That'll be a waste of your time. Our ship was in the outer harbor last night, Brad, when they got machine gunned. Killed one and wounded Master's. Whoever it was, they got away with eight tons of rice. Is Master's all right? So he says. Better see him and get the details. I'll see Masters later. Right now, I'm calling on one of our competitors, Mr. Caridian. You think Mr. Caridian raided our boat? Well, who else? Very well, Brad. But be careful. I'd suffer a tremendous loss if anything happened to you. Thanks, sweetheart. Nothing will. <laughs> I didn't hear you say come in, so that makes us even. Forgive me if I do not shake hands. Custom of my country, you know. Stay away from my boat. Custom of my country, you know. Boat? Gentlemen, do any of you know anything about Mr. Dunham's boat? I am surprised at Mr. Dunham. What would we want with his boat? One of my men is dead. Another's wounded. And I've lost $16,000 worth of cargo. Most unfortunate. And rice is so difficult to obtain these days. How did you know it was rice? My dear Mr. Dunn, are you accusing me? That's right. You have proof, of course. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm a very hard-working man of the importing business. Just like you. So why don't you run along, Mr. Dunham? If that's the way you want it, Caridian, okay. That's the way you're going to get it. Makes you so sure it was Caridian. How would he know our shipping schedule? Because an ex-friend of yours is working for him now, Raymond. Raymond. Well, we'll just have to change our methods. You'd better arm every piece of our equipment. I've already arranged for that. Well, that's fine, Brad. But it only solves one of our problems. What do you mean? Oh, Brad. Caridian isn't our only enemy. Have you been reading the newspapers lately? Just take a look at this. I've seen it. Andrews is a friend of yours. I'll take care of him. That's what you've been saying all along. It isn't only us he's after. There are others. And they're not quite as fond of Andrews as you are. I said I'd handle it. Thank you. And, Brad, I don't think it's wise for you to see too much of Miss Parker. Miss Parker? The girl from the settlement house. She introduced herself to you as Miss Arnold. Does the name Parker mean anything to you? Perhaps it does. And perhaps she's digging into the past, just as your Mr. Andrews is digging into the present. They're both dangerous. In what way is she dangerous to you? Oh, Brad, it's, it's as I said before. I don't want anything to happen to you or to us. By the way, is Andrews still living with you at the hotel? Yeah, why? Just be careful, Brad. And keep your eyes open. Oh, hi, Brad. Hi, Mark. Just been looking over my copy. Say, there was a phone call for you. Louis? Uh-uh. A Miss Arnold. 
Lovely voice. she say what she wanted? Oh, nothing. Except she'd be delighted to join a couple of young blades. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, she sounded so nice, I asked her to have dinner with us. <laughs> For an old St. Bernard, you're doing all right. <laughs> Wait till she sees me. Say, Mark, you're pretty hot on this assignment, aren't you? I sure am. This is no penny ante racket, Brad. It covers the whole world, every country that's trying to get back on its feet. This is a lot worse than the old days of Prohibition. Not everybody drank, but everybody eats. Well, I... Oh, I I better shave if we're going out for dinner. Yeah, and hurry up. Mustn't keep our girl waiting. Some more tea, Miss Arnold? Please. You know, I sure admire the work you're doing. Uh, do you get any help from the local people? Oh, some of them have been very kind. Like Madame Baranoff. Well, what does she do? She contributes food and clothing. I don't know what we'd do without her. Baranoff? Oh, oh, yeah. Importing and exporting business. Uh, doesn't she have an interest in your firm, Brand? She certainly has. She is the firm. I'm just the office boy. Linda? Yes? Your name. It isn't Linda on Lizzie. It's Linda Parker. Huh? Yes, Brad. Why didn't you tell me? My brother was a member of your crew during the war, Danny Parker. Would you have talked to me if you'd known that? What's there to talk about? I don't believe Danny was guilty. Well, the court-martial passed on the evidence. Yeah, why don't you just forget it? I can't. I won't. You came a long way for nothing. I don't care about the court-martial, but it nearly killed my father and mother. For their sake, I've got to find out the truth. Well, what are you trying to prove? That I was guilty? That I did it? Okay, so I did it. You feel better now? Uh, uh, Brad, wait a minute. Uh, don't run off. Sorry, Mark, but I've got to. Good night, Linda. You don't really think Brad had anything to do with what happened to your brother? I... I don't know. Well, you mustn't mind the way he talks. Mark, did he have to go, or... Or was he just angry? Well, a little of both, I guess. He mentioned something before about having a business deal to take care of. Something about meeting a ship. You sure you got your facts straight, Louis? It's after 11. Just be patient, Mr. Dunham. Mr. Caridian's truck has to pass this little bridge. There is no other way to get back to the city. When it slows down for the bridge, we jump on the back. Leave the rest to me. That part will be a pleasure, sir. How much rice are they carrying? My cousin in the country indicated six tons. Hmm, Mr. Caridian will still owe us two tons. Oh, quiet, sir, please. I believe I hear the truck. Okay. Get down in the ditch. Yes, Miss Carr, what is it? Oh, the most wonderful thing has just happened. A truck just drove in and delivered 500 pounds of rice. And this note came with it. Just so the Shanghai Dodgers don't fall down running around the basin. The umpire. Hello. This is Anna, Mr. Andrews. A cable just came for you from Washington. Shall I send it to the hotel, sir? No, just read it to me. Yes, sir. War Department records of Brad Dunham Court Martial show syndicate handled smuggled contraband. No mention to Mara Baranoff. If your fact warrant will back to limit investigation to clear any former army flyer. Thanks, Anna. Any reply, sir? Uh, maybe later. First, I'm going to call on Madame Baranoff. <laughs> Very nice of you to drop in, Mr. Andrews. How nice of you to see me. Do you mind if I get directly to the point? I prefer it that way. Good. You're a very attractive and very clever woman. Yes. So I won't try to flatter you or outsmart you. Why, thank you. You're one of the powers in the black market, aren't you? Yes. And during the war, you were engaged in other more illegal activities, weren't you? That's right, Mr. Andrews. Thanks for the honest answer. Why, not at all. If you print any of this, I shall, of course, sue you for libel. No, I'm here to make a bargain. 
Brad Dunham is my friend. For three years, he's lived under a cloud, the result of a court-martial and dishonorable discharge. The Army arrested Brad and his crew for fine contraband. I believe you had something to do with it. You can prove that? Maybe. Oh. You said something about a bargain. I'll minimize your participation in the black market in exchange for a clean bill of health for Brad. And if I refuse... I'll continue my investigation until they reopen the court martial. And then? You'll hang. Or do they behead people in this country for smuggling contraband during wartime? You are most insolent, Mr. Andrews. The truth often is. Well, what do you say? I say no. And furthermore, I would suggest that your investigation into my private life stop at once. I'm disappointed in you. I thought you'd see the advantage in our bargain. <laughs> anyway, I still think you're very attractive. In fact, I believe you'll be the most beautiful woman ever to lose her head in the city of Shanghai. Hello? I... I wish to speak with Mr. Caridian. Tell him Madame Baranoff is calling. Come in. Mr. Andrews. Yes? Uh, my associate and I. Forgive us for intruding like this. Where's Dunham? Come on, please. Now it handle everything. Uh... I've been reading your newspaper articles with great interest, Mr. Andrews. Oh, my, my name is Caribbean. I'm in the importing business. Get a good price for the rice you imported off Mr. Dunham's boat? Oh, yes, yes, excellent, yes. But I'm here to discuss your business, not mine. You have a very great talent, Mr. Andrews. What a pity to waste it in a business of muckraking. Oh, we don't make the facts, Mr. Caridian. We just print them. And what good does it do? Nothing. Nothing is deader than yesterday's newspaper. Unless it be yesterday's uh, newspaper man. Uh, Mr. Andrews, I would like to see you retire. Oh, with a substantial annuity, of course. Plenty of time to devote to a play or a novel... Aren't all reporters going to write a play? Not this one. I'll go to my grave turning over flat rocks and exposing vermin like you. Your grave? <laughs> but why go sooner than you have to? Another point, Mr. Andrews. You may find that your investigations lead you closer to home than you think. Make that plainer. Your friend, Mr. Dunham, has been extraordinarily successful in his importing business. Has it not occurred to you that perhaps it has been a, a little too successful? Get out. Ask him. And ask him what he did with the six tons of my rice. So you see, sir, it'd be best all round if you stopped exactly where you are. Get out. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Andrews. Hi, Mark. Oh, hello, Brent. Oh, am I busting in on an inspiration? Oh, no, no. I was just sitting here trying to figure something out. You just had some visitors? Yeah. So Louie told me. What did those rats want? Well, they think I'm working too hard. Want me to retire. They get rough? Only verbally. How about a drink? No, oh, thanks. What did they say? Come on, let's have it. Okay, Brad. Caridian said you and he are in the same racket. Is that true? Yes. But it doesn't make sense, Brad. It just doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it? If people are willing to pay the price, why shouldn't I take it? Pay the price? Do you know anything about the price they're really paying? What about the price I paid? Oh, do you know what it means to be an outcast? Have decent people walk away from you? Have every legitimate door slammed in your face for something you didn't do? Brad, ever since I got here, I've been working on your case, trying to help you, trying to clear you. 
What chance have I got of you sticking this rotten racket? Oh, do you want me to go the same way Ellis did? I got as much right to travel first cabin as anybody. And if the black market's my ticket, why, I'm buying it. Get out of it. Get out of it, Brad. You're not the same guy who fought against this sort of thing, against a little guy getting pushed around. Until I got pushed around. That's it? That's it. Okay. You don't want me around here. No guy likes to live with a noisy conscience. Well, I came here to do a job, and I'm going to do it. I'll send for my stuff later. Danny Parker went first. Then Rock. Then Ellis. I'm next. All right, so I'm next. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. We welcome back as our guest tonight... Pretty Martha Heyer, who has made great strides in her career since her last visit. How does it feel, Martha, to be a leading lady? I love it, Mr. Keeley, and I'm especially happy to be at RKO. They've been making some great pictures over there, especially the Lasky McEwen adaptation of The Miracle of the Bells. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. The cast really brings Russell Janney's book to life. That's right, Martha. Fred McMurray does a fine job as the press agent, and Frank Sinatra as Father Paul is excellent. I understand RKO had just about given up their search for an actress to play the part of Olga when they found Valley. There's no doubt her portrayal of Joan of Arc in The Miracle of the Bells is outstanding. Yes, I watched them shoot those scenes. Valley didn't have an easy job. She wore a heavy, tight-fitting suit of chain mail, which was almost unbearably hot under the light. When she removed it at short intervals to rest, the wardrobe department kept her supplied with fresh sets of lingerie. John Kennedy will be interested to hear that they were cared for with Lux. Well, that's not surprising, Martha, because RKO Studios insist on Lux care for everything washable. And the delicate pastels that Valley loves require gentle care. You know how they can fade. If you wash under things the wrong way. But now, the new tiny diamonds of Lux make it easier than ever to keep under things color fresh three times as long. The wardrobe mistress says the new Lux is faster, too. And richer. The new tiny diamonds of Lux make thick, abundant suds that last and last. They remove soil, which other types of suds can't. So naturally, things look cleaner and fresher, too. These new diamonds are perfect care for pretty lingerie. Thank you for coming tonight, Martha Heyer. Here is Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act Three of Intrigue, starring George Raft as Brad Dunham and June Havoc as Tamara Baranoff. In the week that's gone by, Mark Andrews has worked day and night, piling up fact upon fact into an overwhelming indictment against the black market. The article is finished now. And in the office of the Shanghai newspaper, Mr. Sen, the publisher, has just finished reading it. Well, Mr. Sen, what do you think? You're sure you can substantiate these facts? I can. All of them. It will blow this town wide open. I hope it does. The people have a right to know the truth. If you're willing to take the risk, Mr. Andrews, I am. I'll print it. Thank you, Mr. Sen. Uh, Before you go, let me sound a note of warning. Those you mention in this article are not going to take this lying down, you know. No. We'll just see who's the more powerful, they or the press. Watch where you walk, Mr. Andrews. I'd hate to lose you. All reporters never die, Mr. Sen. The ink in their veins preserves them. You don't seem to realize what this means, Mr. Caridian. Andrews wrote this article. The newspaper was going to publish it tomorrow. How did you know about it, Ramon? I have a man planted in the editorial department. He borrowed the article from Sen's desk. A remarkable man, Mr. Andrews. 
I dislike harming him, really. But he leaves us no alternative. I would like that job very much. It is yours. But first, get Madame Baranoff on the telephone. We'll talk it over with her. Who is it? Brad. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Brad. I'm attending to some personal business at the moment. Oh, I... So I heard. Oh, what are these rats doing here? Caridian, Raymond. Raymond, please. Put your gun away. You left me no choice, Brad. I've warned you Mr. Andrews would become dangerous. You said you'd handle it. Well, you didn't. And somebody has to. Oh, the black market certainly makes strange bedfellows. Just good business, Mr. Dunham. Mark Andrews is our common enemy. Stay away from him. Brad, we've got to work together. And you'll die together. Just remember that. You. How dare you speak to me like that. You were nothing when I took you into the firm and gave you the chance to get the things you said you wanted. Money, self-respect. Well, you've got them. But nobody hands you those things on a silver platter, Brad. They've got to be paid for. But Mark isn't paying for it. And if anything happens to him, you'll answer to me. Each one of you. It would seem we have quite a problem, Madame Baranoff. Two problems. <laughs> Yes, I did. I guess I opened the wrong door. I was looking for Miss Parker. I didn't know this was your dormitory. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Dunham. We weren't asleep. It's time you were. Come on, kids. You hit the sack. Oh, well, well, right, Mr. Right, Mr. Dunham. If you tell us a story. <laughs> oh, I don't know any stories. Please. Oh, please, oh, please, Mr. Dunham. Okay, okay. Well... Well, uh, well, once upon a time, there was a flyer. Was he a dragon? Some people thought he was. Dragons don't fly. Well, this one did. Besides, who's telling this story? I'll keep quiet. Go on. Well, uh, well, this flyer, this dragon, I mean, got into a lot of trouble for something he didn't do. And it changed his whole life. Then he got mixed up with a lady dragon. And the flyer went to work for the lady dragon because he had to eat and have a place to live. Did he do wrong things? Some. Then he met a girl. Was the girl a dragon, too? No. She was very pretty and very sweet. Like a princess? Yes, like a princess. But she thought the flyer had done something bad to her brother. Did he? No. The flyer was innocent. And he wanted her to believe that because... Because he loved the princess. And did she love him? I don't know that part of the story yet, sweetheart. Now, look. Get back in bed, huh? But, but Mr. Dunham, does the story have a happy ending? I don't know, honey. Someday if I find out, I'll, I'll tell you how it ended. If I can. Well, good night, Mr. Dunham. Good, good night. night. Well, I'm sorry, kids. The one thing I'm not is a storyteller. Brad? Hello, Linda. I, I've been looking for you. I... Well, I didn't mean to barge in on the kids. It's I... all right. They love to be told stories. Even unfinished stories. You... You heard me just now? Yes. I'm sorry, Brad. I'm sorry I misjudged you. In my heart, I... I didn't want to believe it. You're the first fine thing that came into my life since the day I thought it was over. And I'm... I'm not going to let you out of it. Brad, that story you told the children... Why didn't you tell me? There's only my word that it's true. Then why did you come here? I don't know. I I hadn't planned to come here. I've been looking for Mark. Well, I can't find him anywhere. He's in trouble, Linda. And I've got to find him. Can I help you? No. No, this is something i got to do myself. Thanks, anyway. Hello. Yeah, this is Andrews. Oh, hello, Mr. Sam. Yeah, I, I just got in. What's that about my article? Stolen? Well, well, now look, don't worry. I've got a carbon copy. No, no, I, I'll bring it down myself. Who? Dunham. Been looking for me, huh? 
Well, if Dunham wants to see me, tell him I'm on my way down. And I've been trying to find you all day, Mark. The chances are they've been looking for you, too. Raymond, Caridian. You've got all you can do, Brad, worrying about yourself. Look, I know I'm down in your book as a rat. But it doesn't matter about me. For your own sake. For what you're trying to do. Be careful. Sure, sure, Brad. I'll be careful. Catch and wait. I'm getting you to a hospital. Brad, please. Mr. Sen. Okay. Okay, Mark. You can see Mr. Andrews now, Mr. Dunham. Give it to me straight, Doc. What are his chances? Well, not so good. He suffered a great loss of blood. Brad. Brad. Did you get... Did you get my article to the paper? Yes. They got it, Mark. Oh, thanks, pal. Oh, come on, Brad. Don't let this get you down. How do you expect me to feel? If I had gotten out of when you asked me to, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Brad, listen. Madame Baranoff was behind the smuggling in your plane. guilty member of your crew was robbed. It's all in the article. But I, I wanted you to hear, hear it from me. Mark. Mark. You can't check out on me again. You can't. <laughs> Old reporters never die. Did I... Did I do all right for... for it all? did all right. Doc. Yes? He... He's dead, Doc. Is something wrong? Why do you not answer me? Sorry, Louis. I've been following you. You're not going into the warehouse. Yeah, I'm going into this warehouse. Oh, no, no, do not go in there, Mr. Dunham. They will kill you. It is in the newspapers. All their names, they will Louis, kill you. Louis, round up the people, the women and the kids, the poor people, Louis. Bring them here to the warehouse. It's filled with food. Tell the people to take the food. It's theirs. I want them to have it, all of it. Yes, Mr. Dunham. Now, Louis, a little later may be too late. I tell them, Mr. Dunham, I bring them here now. Raymond, where are you phoning from? Oh, good. You can be here in five minutes. What? The police got crazy. No, no, don't worry. They won't get us. The plane's all ready. Oh, yes, darling, just you and I. Now hurry. Brad. Oh, Brad, darling, I knew I could count on you. Just I, you and I, darling. I, I can explain that, Brad. You see, Raymond... Shut up. You're going to write a confession that's going to clear me. Oh, Brad, don't think of the past. It's over. It's over. You heard what I said. Where's Raymond? Where was he phoning from? Brad, Brad, listen, I've got money. All the money we'll ever need. We can go away together somewhere. You're going to sit down and write what I tell you to write. Brad, don't. There's the pen and there's the paper. Now start writing. 
by Tamara Barano. Hereby consent. Raymond Perez, who was in my employ, together with Lieutenant Rock and I, Tamara Baranoff, were solely guilty. Oh, I... This is my true and final confession. All right, now sign it. I'll take that paper. Raymond, keep your gun on him. Don't worry. Mr. Dunham, I'm afraid this confession will never see the light of day. Do not go in. Please do not go in. The police are here. What's happening? I sent for the police. I am afraid it is too late. There are no shots before. He wanted it this way. I I could not... Linda. Oh, Brad. It's all right. Brad. Louis, take this to Mr. Sen. This paper. It's a confession from Madame Barano. Oh, yes, Mr. Dunham. We're cleared now, Linda. Your brother and I. You didn't come all this way to Shanghai for nothing, after all. You can go back now, Linda. Back home. Home. But not alone, Brad. Please, not alone. No, baby. Not alone. Our stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. A thrilling play, still more exciting with their fine performances. Our thanks to George Raft and June Havoc, whom we bring back to the footlights. <laughs> George, it's not often we have a star who comes from darkest Africa to play a role on Lux, but we're certainly grateful that you made it. Well, that's a wonder I did, Bill. The going was pretty rough getting in and out of Africa. You were shooting your picture, Outpost in Morocco, George. Yes, and we had to drive 650 miles south of Casablanca for the right location. Well, what did you do for roads? We didn't pay much attention to the roads. We just kept on going. Oh, like we do here in California. <laughs> <laughs> did you find the natives friendly, George? Friendly, but puzzled. When we arrived with an army of legionnaires in uniform, they must have thought we would come to take the country over. <laughs> were they pretty hospitable when they found out you were actors? Uh, except when they said they'd happy to have us for dinner. I didn't know qu quite how to take it. I was afraid that maybe they were fond of boiled ham. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell us they were cannibals. Well, maybe not, but we were sure careful to stay on the right side of them. And by the right side, you mean, of course, the outside. <laughs> yep, that was one time I didn't want to be in the gravy. But what are you cooking up for next week, Bill? Next Monday night from 20th Century Fox, we bring our audience an exciting drama of romance against the colorful background of the racetrack. It's The Home Stretch, starring mm. Cornell Wilde and Maureen O'Hara. Well, you, you couldn't do better than that, Bill. The Home Stretch is a thrilling story. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks to both of you. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Cornell Wilde and Maureen O'Hara in the home stretch. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies, are you throwing away used kitchen fat? They can be turned into cash. Don't throw away a single drop. Because your dealer is paying a good price for used fats. Right now, there's the greatest shortage of fats and oils in history. Scores of industries need those used fats from your kitchen. So skim your gravies and save the fat from your frying pan. Pour used fats into a convenient tin. Turn them into cash as soon as the tin is full. June Havoc appeared by arrangement with 20th Century Fox, producers of Fury at Furnace Creek. Heard in our cast tonight were William Johnstone as Mark and Joan Banks.